physical and chemical properties and physical and chemical change. What are uh, properties, physical properties? Physical properties are the properties of a substance that we can measure without changing, sorry, that we can measure without changing the identity of the substance. Okay, for example, if I look, if you look at this uh, piece of metal and I ask you what is the color of this? To know the color of this substance, you do not have to change the identity. You just look at it and you say, okay, this is kind of like brown in color, reddish brown in color. Okay, if I ask you what is the physical state of this substance, you do not have to know the identity, you do not have to change the identity of the substance, you can tell me that this is a solid. If I ask you what's the weight of this, you can just weigh it. You do not have to change the identity of the substance. If I ask you what is the temperature of this, you just stick a thermometer on this, measure the temperature. You are not doing any chemical change to it. You do not have to change the identity. Those properties are called as physical properties. Examples, mass of a substance, volume, how much space it occupies, temperature, color of the substance, hardness, how hard the substance is, the shape of the substance, the physical state of the substance, solid liquid gas, boiling point, freezing point. If I ask you what's the boiling point of water, you just take water, put it on a stove, heat it up and whenever it starts boiling, you measure the temperature. You do not change the identity. You do not have to convert water into something else. It would stay as water. Density. These are all examples of physical properties. Now physical change is a type of change that does not change the identity of the substance, meaning the composition of the substance will stay the same. Whenever matter undergoes a physical change, its composition remains constant. You can't change the composition. For example, if you take water, water exists as ice, water and steam, three different states, solid, liquid, gas. If you take ice and you turn it into heat it up, it turns into liquid water. And you take water, you boil it, it turns into steam. What is the chemical uh, composition of ice? It's H2O because that's the composition of water. What's the chemical formula of water? Liquid water, H2O. What's the chemical composition of steam? H2O. All of them are H2O. So chemically, nothing is changing. You start with H2O, you are ending with H2O. So if I write this reaction, this would be H2O is turning into H2O. H2O was solid in the beginning, now it is liquid or you can say H2O was liquid in the beginning and now it is turning into gas, steam. So chemical composition is still the same. When chemical composition does not change, that is called as a physical change. For example, if I take, a, if you take your pencil or your pen in your hand and you break it into two pieces, okay, you get two pieces of pencil. We have not changed the chemical substance that is present inside that pencil, right? The pencil, if it is made up of, let's say, like, let's say it's made up of wood right here. The whole thing was made up of wood. When you break it, you just have two pieces of wood. Chemically, you have not changed anything. That is called a physical change. For example, if you look at this, what are these? These are copper pennies. Pennies made up of copper. Okay, you can take copper, take this, and you can bend and melt and convert it into a spigot, something that looks like this. This is also copper and this is also copper. Identity, chemical identity has not changed. Another example is, for example, iron. A lot of times what people do with iron, they melt it and they convert it into a different shape that they want. They t make machines out of it, whatever they want. But what they are doing here is they take a big block of iron, which is Fe, they turn it into, diff melt it and turn it into different shapes, which is also Fe. So chemically, nothing has changed. It was Fe before, it is Fe at the end. That is called a physical change. On the other hand, chemical properties and chemical changes involve change in identity. You have to change the identity of the substance. What is a chemical property? Chemical property is that property of a substance. If you are interested in understanding that property, you would have to change the identity of the substance. For example, if I ask you, can wood burn? Can you burn wood? The answer is yes, right? But how do you know it? You have actually seen 
that wood can burn so if i ask you can you burn wood the if you have never seen wood burning what is the first thing that you would do you will put take wood and you will light it to fire if it burns then you would say yes it burns if it doesn't burn then you would say no it doesn't burn right so that is a property of wood that it can actually burn so when you are in this in interested in this property of burning of wood you have to actually burn wood to know if it is working and when you burn wood let's say i took wood and i put it on fire okay what do i get at the end i get ash ashes at the end so i have lost my wood i started with wood but what i have is ashes so my identity of the substance has changed that property is called a chemical property okay and the property that we are talking about here burning chemically or technically it is called as flammability if a substance can actually burn if it can catch fire we say that the substance is flammable okay you cannot tell me if a substance is flammable or not without actually putting it to fire okay if you want to determine if something is flammable we must have try to burn it if it burns it no longer is the original substance so in order to understand this property you have to basically change the chemical identity of the substance and that is the chemical property and what is a chemical change chemical change similarly is a change in which the identity of the substance will change chemical changes are the changes where the identity of the substance changes when a substance changes into something completely different it has undergone a chemical change this is also called as a chemical reaction for example if you take wood and you burn it it will give you ashes so it i started with wood but i do not have wood at the end i have ashes so i have a new chemical substance example if you take water and you put like lot of electric current through it it will turn into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas i started with chemically h2o what do i have at the end i don't have h2o i have h2 and o2 which means i have changed the identity of the substance okay in previous example what we saw we saw that h2o was liquid i heated it up it became h2o gas it was h2o before it was h2o at the end chemically it's the same thing so this is a physical change when you just do physical changes whereas in this case in the bottom water has turned into hydrogen h2 and o2 there's no h2o left on the right side which means this is a chemical change anything when you're burning stuff usually is a chemical change example in this case zinc plus sulfur gives you zns zinc sulfide what you started with was zinc and sulfur two different things what you end up with with is one zns there's no zinc there's no sulfur left you have zinc atom and sulfur atom but there's no zinc left here what you have is zinc sulfide there's no sulfur here what you have is sulfide again things have when the atoms rearrange that is usually a chemical reaction okay another example is this a change that forms new compound for example if you take when we burn gas in our uh, stove top gas the fuel that is used is called methane this is methane ch4 chemically it burns in presence of oxygen o2 these are two molecules of oxygen it will burn to give you what it burns to give you co2 and water two molecules of water h2o and h2o so two molecules of water which means i started with methane but i don't have methane at the end i started with oxygen i do not have oxygen gas at the end i have completely new substance so this is a chemical change there are some easier ways that you can tell if a reaction is a chemical change or not i will list them here the evidence of chemical change what are those evidence the first one is easy a color would change for example when you take iron a block of iron you leave it outside a lot in sun water oxygen over time it rust okay iron looks like silver in color shiny but when it rust it forms iron oxide it reacts with oxygen in the air and this is 
what is rusted iron and this rusted iron is basically brown in color it's like brown ashy powdery brown powder right so the color has changed you started with fe but you don't have fe at the end what you have is feo a new compound so that is called a chemical change the color would change the second example or evidence is bubbling when you see bubbling or fizzing just means there are a lot of bubbles being produced which simply means a gas is produced if you mix two things together and you suddenly start seeing bubbling happening that means there is some gas that is produced this production of gas is an example of a chemical change third example is uh, light is produced for example in this case when the gas burns it produces all this light around it this is an example that there's a chemical change occurring something new is being produced fourth example evidence is heat change you will feel there's a change in heat either it will absorb heat or it will release heat for example again burning of gas or burning of wood usually there's a lot of heat that is produced so if there's a heat change involved most of the times that means it's a evidence of a chemical reaction the fifth evidence is formation of a solid solid formation for example if i take one liquid this is let's say a liquid and i mix take another liquid this is also liquid and i mix these two liquids together with each other and suddenly i see that there is some solid being produced that means there was no solid in the beginning something new is happening something new is being produced which means it's a chemical change so all these if you notice any of these uh, happening these are evidence of a chemical change for example if i take coal burning of coal if you burn coal it produces a lot of heat it produces a lot of energy it produces a lot of light and you do not look the coal at the end would not look like coal in the beginning which means it's a chemical change if you take sugar and you caramelize it sugar caramelization that is a chemical change how do i know sugar is white solid particle powder in the beginning when you heat it too much it turns into at the end it turns into this liquidy or kind of like viscous solution which is brown in color color has changed texture has changed taste has changed sugar tastes different caramel tastes different right which means it is a chemical change so that's how you can tell if it's a physical change or a chemical change in case of chemical and physical change the one law that is applied that is important to chemistry is law of conservation of mass what this law tells you that the mass is always conserved which means mass cannot be created cannot be destroyed mass means matter matter can neither be created or or nor destroyed you can't create it you can't destroy it it's fixed only thing that happens is it goes from one form to another but matter mass is always fixed for example if we do a reaction of hydrogen plus oxygen and it gives us water let's say if i start with 4 grams of hydrogen 32 grams of oxygen at the end of the reaction i should get water okay and how much water should i get whatever i started with i started with 32 plus 4 so at the end i should get 36 grams 32 plus 4 which is 36 grams of water that is what is law of conservation of masses you can't destroy mass the amount of reactant should be equal to amount of product example a question like this if 16 grams of methane reacts with 64 grams of oxygen and gives you 36 grams of water how many grams of carbon dioxide are produced in this reaction so what's given to us is 16 grams of methane 64 grams of oxygen produces 36 grams of water question is asking how much carbon dioxide is produced again total mass of reactant should be equal to total mass of product which means 16 plus 64 should be equal to 36 plus co2 whatever carbon dioxide is which means what is co2 co2 will be 16 plus 64 minus 36 which is 44 grams so this would give you 44.0 grams of co2 okay why do i write 44.0 because this is 16.0 64.0 36.0 right 
so this is addition and subtraction so we look at number of decimal places which is one digit after decimal so i include 44.0 and that's it